الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير نبي أرسله أرسله الله تبارك وتعالى إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونذيرا بين يده الساعة ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد خسر وغوى أما بعد فيا أيها المسلمون الكرماء أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد فاز المتقون قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Beloved brothers and sisters, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations unto Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members and his companions, I remind each and every one of us to be conscious of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that, O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Almighty Allah up until your last dying moment. And up until your last dying moment, we should be striving and struggling to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring about submission in our lives for the one and only creator Azza wa Jal. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem, لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. We all know that the deadly shootings at the offices of the French satirical newspaper Charlie Hedbo have once again put us, Islam and the Muslims, under the spotlight. Charlie Hedbo took pleasure in ridiculing and mocking the beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and churning out hate and intolerance for over 1.6 billion Muslims around the globe. We are deeply offended, we are hurt, and yes, we feel insulted. For such people, we show pity. We show pity because they chose to live a life filled of hate, for being consumed and blinded by racism and a cleverly disguised right to offend. As Muslims, let us reiterate that we do not endorse, sanction or encourage such killings. We do not believe in kangaroo justice and vigilantism. In the media, we find that the issue has been framed in the following way, that it is a clash between two camps. One camp stands for freedom of expression and the other camp wants to stop that freedom of expression. As though to say that the first camp is enlightened and is virtuous and the other is a relic of the dark ages. The clash in other words is between a civilized and a civilizing West and Islam that refuses to be civilized. If this framing of the whole issue is accepted. If we accept this, then the outcome has already been decided. In other words, you are either for freedom of expression or you are against freedom of expression. Or are you for freedom of expression or are you not for it? If we phrase it in a question, then this is a very loaded question. And just like the yes and no question, that have you stopped beating your wife? No matter how a person is to answer that yes or no question, that person remains guilty. When a Muslim responds by saying that we also believe in freedom of expression, but, and when it is said, but, this is where it matters very little what that Muslim says thereafter. Because it is obvious to the other that you are trying to add exclusions and limitations to a basic moral value while the other side is asking for no such limits. The other is not asking for those limits. It isn't difficult to see which side will come out ahead. But this predicament is, we could say, a result of uncritically and wholly accepting a false statement about the nature of the clash. For the real clash 
is not between two different freedoms or is not between those who are for and those who are against freedom but it is about two different freedoms on the one hand is the freedom to insult and on the other hand is the freedom from insult whether it was the satanic verses in the 80s or the cartoons of 2005 and their endless production thereafter if they stand for freedom it is freedom to insult and nothing else pure and simple muslims on the other hand have stood for and demand freedom from insult nothing more nothing less these are we could say certainly opposing values you can be for one or you can be for the other and the question does arise which one is a better value to see this let us imagine a society which truly believes in the first as a cherished moral value it celebrates freedom to insult and it guards it at all costs every member of it enjoys this freedom the freedom to insult and practices it regularly for example in a business everyone insults the next person the boss is insulting the employees the employees are insulting the boss and so on an accountant insults his creditors and the creditors insult the accountant everyone is enjoying a great freedom to insult the same is true of the home the husband insults the wife the wife insults the husband the children insult each other and their parents and in doing so they all stand on the high moral ground because freedom to insult is a fundamental freedom on which the society is built contrary to the claims of pundits if the western society was truly built on this cherished moral value it would have perished a long time ago consumed by the fires of hatred and negativity generated by this freedom no home no neighborhood no village no business no organization and no society can survive for long if it makes freedom to insult a cornerstone of its freedoms clearly most of those who advocate this freedom do not practice it in their daily lives but they are making an exception in the case of islam and muslims the driving force behind this is not any great moral principle but a deep rooted hatred born of ignorance whether this freedom to insult is a western value or not islam has nothing to do with it it islam lays emphasis on its exact opposite the freedom from insult islam values human dignity decency and harmony in the society the freedom that islam ensures includes freedom from insults while it does not shy away islam does not shy away from academic discussion and criticism of its beliefs and by showing the falsehood of other beliefs or non-islamic beliefs but islam makes sure that the discussion remains civil in those discussions islam wants to engage the intellect of its opponents in contrast to those who itch to insult their opponents and they are interested in only satisfying their vulgar emotions so in islam while its most important battle is against false gods it asks its followers you and i to refrain from reviling them as allah azza wa jalla mentions in the quran wa la tasubbu alladhina yad'una min duni llah fa yasubbu allah adwan bi ghayri ilm revile not those whom they call upon besides allah less they out of spite revile allah in their ignorance the quran also reminds us to stay away from harsh speech where allah says in the quran allah loves not the utterance of harsh speech save by the one who has been wronged nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is being reviled by the lowest of the world the scum of the world taught muslims to never let the low moral standards of their adversaries dictate theirs in islam freedom of speech is ring fenced by the protection of honor and dignity as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah al-hujurat oh you who believe 
Let not one group of people scoff another group. They may be better than them. Let not one group of women scoff at another group of women. They may be better than them. And defame not one another, nor revile one another by hateful names and appellations. Ill is the name of sin after belief. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, let us ponder over the following. As a result of these teachings of Islam, Muslims can never imagine insulting any prophet from Adam alayhi salam to Musa alayhi salam to Jesus right up until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam peace be upon them all even when they ruled the world even when Muslims ruled the world Muslims treated the religious leaders of non-Muslims with respect even during battles in the courts of Baghdad, we find that Jewish and Christian scholars engaged with, in open discussions with the Muslim scholars. Needless to say, they had not been attracted by the freedom to insult, but its exact opposite. Freedom from insult is a fundamental value. And this value assures peace and harmony. It leads to healthy societies. What is true of a home, a town, or a city, is also true of a world as it has become a global village. Now, more than ever before, the world needs the harmony and tolerance that can only be assured by the freedom from insults. And let us not forget that those who were victim to this barbaric act were also Muslims themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all a clear and sound understanding. Ameen. وأقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ويا نجاة التائبين